What up, my beautiful Laker fans out there? It's your boy Dan, a Laker fan. And, ta-da! Last game of the season, fellas. You gotta be excited. Uh, I'm actually more excited for the summer than I was excited the whole season because it was another tragic season for us, but there was improvement. So, gotta give a shout-out to all you guys who stuck uh, with us through the whole season, you know. Um, all you Laker fans that kept watching the games, even through the thick and thin, uh, you know, you're the real kind of Laker fans I love. And uh, um, I gotta say, I gotta recommend you guys because, you know, most fans, you know, they they pretty much leave the arena early if you catch my drift. They don't really care about basketball. They just, they only bandwagon when teams are winning. So it is what it is. And most of those are <coughs> Clipper fans. I'm sorry. Um, anyways, <sighs> man, long season, roller coaster ride, emotional, all of the above. Tonight, we lose to the Golden State Flapjacks. My girl asks me, funny story, she says, why do you call them the Golden State Flapjacks? I said, baby, because they're stacked. All right, they got all the whole Western Conference All-Stars. And because all they do is jack three-pointers. That's why I call them the Golden State Flapjacks. And I got to say, man, we lost tonight, but I'm still proud of my boys. You know, they kept competing even when we were, when we were playing third stringers or whatever. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is there was a lot of improvement, a lot to be happy about. Um, a lot we still have to improve. I'm sure Magic's already working on it. Um, I can't wait to see what comes of the offseason. I'm sure you guys are just as excited and nervous for the lot for the NBA lottery coming May 16th. I'll definitely be dropping a video. But I'll be dropping a lot of videos before then. But definitely be dropping a video on that day about the lottery you know, the outcome. Some of you guys want me to live stream. I've never done such a thing, so I got to figure out how to do that. Um, but still, um, yeah, the, um, the outcome of the lottery will determine probably in which direction we go this off season. Um, so I'm very excited and very nervous for that day. I hope we keep that top three pick. I don't care if it's one through three, as long as we keep it. If we get Markel Fultz, Lonzo Ball, or Josh Jackson, even if we get De'Aaron Fox, I don't care. As long as we keep our pick, um, Adding another player, young piece, to this team or even trading that pick would be very ben beneficial to us. And uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds in store. Anyways, guys, uh, enough of my babbling. I'm going to go on ahead and, uh, and and give you guys a grade for each player on this roster. And tell you guys, uh, I'll be making a separate video letting you guys know who we should move, who we should cut, and who we should uh, trade. Um and who we should resign. So definitely keep it locked right here for everything Lakers throughout the summer. I'll definitely be um, dropping videos for you guys, you know, as, as we go along. And um, all right, starting off with uh, the guard that we just recently signed from the D-League, David Nwaba. All right, this guy has the potential to be a lockdown defender. All right, if he improves his jump shot, he can be very, very good for us. And uh, he's very athletic, so I like the kid a lot. I'm gonna start off with him. I'm gonna give him a B because he was solid. Doesn't get an A because his offensive game still needs a lot of work. But other, otherwise than that, he's really, really good. And I look forward to hopefully a, a couple of years of him as being a Laker. Um, next player also gets a B from me um, out of Florida. Um, Corey Brewer. Great pickup by Magic Johnson. I felt like once they picked him up in Nuaba, it changed the whole dynamic of our second uh, unit. <laughs> they became more of a defensive-minded team, as you can see tonight. <laughs> Uh, Steve Kerr was chewing out uh, his team because we're, that that team I just mentioned uh, started coming back on his Warriors who were up by 22 at the point that he took out his starter. So definitely Corey Brewer is a keeper. He never stops playing, whether it's um, you know the beginning of the season, the middle, or the end. This kid plays hard for 48 minutes. Um, so definitely gets a B for me. And uh, next B I'm giving out is for Tyler Ennis, who definitely came in you know, um, hitting three-pointers. He was a pretty decent floor general for us. He was definitely a balanced, balanced point guard who can score a pass. And I even liked his defense, even though he's undersized. The only reason he gets a B and not a B-plus for me is because he's undersized. But, hey, you can't knock the guy. He's, he, end, he ended up being pretty good for us. He averaged like 11 points off the bench. Great job. Uh, if we keep those three together off the bench, I really like our bench moving forward. Um, next guy, Tarek Black. Love the kid. Um... All right, Tark Black got most of his minutes as a backup center in, earlier in the season to Moskov. Uh, when we gave minutes to Vita Zubats, he kind of got, you know, slighted a little bit. But nonetheless, he did a solid, solid job for us. Uh, I give him a C+. Plus. Uh, 
because he still needs to work a lot on his offensive game. Uh, he's basically one dimensional. He's defensive and rebounding kind of big and you know he's athletic so he dunks the ball here and there definitely appreciate him but uh he gets a c plus from me um he still could work on his offensive game a lot if he could develop a baby uh jump hook shot you know he could maybe get his shot off over taller players because he is a bit undersized but um he'd be a great backup to any big man in the league and uh, so Tariq black i appreciated his effort all season long next player Vita zubats man what a surprise this kid we drafted him late, late in the first round, uh, or was it the second round? I'm not exactly sure, but that kid is going to be special. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Andrew Bynum. When Andrew Bynum first came in the, in the league, uh, he was very raw. But when we started seeing the potential was when he, after he dunked on Shaq and he started gaining confidence. Well, this guy started gaining confidence since the summer league, and he played up. He, he kept playing up, up, up his his scale level kept going up. His, he started showing us different uh, facets of his game. His baby jump shot. His uh, his hook shot. He started showing his turnaround pose, drop step moves. You know, um, the way he used his body in screens. And he's just a, a, a pretty good center. He can very well be the starting center for the Lakers. Maybe even an all-star in the future. I like the kid. He's still very raw. Still needs to polish his game. Work on his offensive and defensive game um, in the offseason in the summer. But I think he will improve. Uh, he's very young, only 19 years of age. And we got a steal in the draft, ladies and gentlemen. So very excited for Avita Subots And the Croatian sensation. Can't wait to see how he uh, settles in with the Lakers moving forward. <sighs> All right, guys. One of the disappointments in the season. Lul Dang. Um, I knew that he wasn't going to be the same Lul Dang from Miami. I knew he wasn't... Definitely not going to be the same little dang from Chicago, but I didn't know he was going to just think it up this way. He couldn't. He couldn't make a shot if it was the size of if the net, the rim was the size of a pool, guys. He couldn't throw it in there. Um, he's a good, great veteran though for I guess the bench. And if I had to choose between him and Mozgov to keep one of the two, because obviously we might not be able to get rid of both of the contracts, I definitely, you know, keep a little dang around uh, because he is a mentor to Brandon Ingram. And at the end of the day, you know, he can he can definitely give you solid minutes if you need him to. But, man, for the price that we paid, that was probably one of the big, biggest flops in the in the uh, offseason last year and the summer. Um, but what can you expect? You know, Jim, Jimbo and, and Mitch Cup, dumbass, you know, they pretty much ruined the, the outlook for the future. If we would have kept that cap space or gave players a one-year deal instead then we'd be in an even greater position right now. You know, we wouldn't be relying so much on draft picks. So, yeah, a little dang from me. I'm sorry, but he, he gets a D-, minus only because he's a, guy, a good guy. I don't give him an F, you know. Moving on, Thomas Robinson, love the kid. Plays with a lot of hard, grit, determination, and he's super athletic. And if he develops a jumper, he's already a great backup. Who knows? This guy is a limit for Thomas Robinson. He's only 25. I don't understand why teams have quit on him. I get it that we live in a league now that it's stretch fours and fives. So if you, you don't have a three ball, you're probably going to be a role player or a D-leaguer. But Thomas Robinson, he plays with a lot of heart. You know, he plays really hard. He's gritty. He's determined. He, he crashes the glass. Um, very Draymond Green-esque, except the only difference is Draymond can stretch the floor and do other little things like pass the ball well and dribble. So I really like Thomas Robinson. He gets a B-plus from me. Because from the moment he came in, from since the summer, he earned his roster spot. He was he was most likely to get cut, but he didn't get cut. So, Thomas Robinson, shout out to you. I hope to keep you. I hope to see you on the Lakers for many years to come. Metal World Peace, man. He's fun to watch. Love the guy. I don't think he'll make the roster next season because I think Magic wants to use it on, on you know, young talent or good role players. But, man, he was great for us. He basically was responsible for helping us win a championship Back in 2010, if he doesn't hit those shots in Game 7, we'd probably be looking at another Boston Celtic banner. So, shout out to Meta. Much respect, much love to Meta World Peace. Uh, I wish him a lot of love and success wherever he goes. He's always going to have fans here in L.A. Uh, I give that man, just for his effort, his grit, and the way he was a, a role model for the Lakers, I give him a B plus, you know, because on and off the court, he's just been a, a model citizen for the Lakers and for the young talent to look up to. He's the kind of veteran we, we um, should have paid a little bit more money to instead of Lil Dang because he led by example on and off the court. Moving on to one of my favorite players, Larry Nance Jr. Man, Larry, Larry. 
Gotta love Larry, man. Larry Springer. This man gets off. All right, he's a highlight reel waiting to happen. Not only that, but he plays hard on both ends, and he never stops. He never gives up. Deflects a lot of balls in the passing lane. No pun intended. <laughs> and uh, he blocks shots, gets rebounds, does all the little things that help your team win. Um, Larry Nance Jr., all right, he gets a B, B plus from me for this season. Um, very happy with him. I see a lot of improvement, especially on the defensive end. Uh, his three ball is now uh, falling for him, so I, I love Larry Nance Jr. Moving on, Timothy Moskov. <sighs> Probably the biggest flop in free agency. This guy was the first person that Jim, Jimbo, the dumbass, and Mitch Kupchak called midnight. Guys, they acted like this is LeBron James or something. They called, you know, Timothy Moskov, their biggest free agent target. Oh, my God. This was suicide, guys. And we have him for the next two years. He's horrible, all right? Uh, he, he hits shots here and there, but he doesn't play any defense. He doesn't get back. Um, his rebounding is a joke. What do you average? Six rebounds a game for guys getting paid, like, what, 15 million? No way. Uh, I hope we get rid of him. You know, like I said, if I had to keep between one, little dang and him, definitely keep me a little dang. So, Timothy Mosgoff, man, sayonara, dude. I hope, I mean, good luck to you. It seems like a great dude and everything just doesn't fit with the Lakers. I hope we get rid of him, even if it means we have to give up something you know um all right next guy julius randall was the most polarizing player for me because the kid has the world of talent but he he decides when he wants to show up or not you know very similar to d'angelo russell earlier in the season before the trade deadline but except julius randall kept doing it all season and i don't like his attitude guys something about him i don't know if you guys saw tonight versus the golden state uh waffles uh we freaking all right, he doesn't get back on defense, and he hangs his head and blames teammates sometimes. He seems like a complainer, and he seems like a head case for the coach moving forward. Uh, I know he's young right now. He's not a head case now, but he seems like he has a, a, a strong personality. And I think uh, Julius Randle will get traded, but only for the right piece because he has a world of talent. So um, Julius Randle, probably the most replaceable starter uh, in the Lakers starting lineup. And he has a lot of talent, but with his attitude and personality, I don't know if he's just gonna, the right fit for us. Now, if he would have developed uh, the jump shot like it was promised to us this summer, um, you know, I'd probably be singing a different tune. But he, I didn't see his jumper improve much. He takes awkward shots. He, he's very sloppy, turnover prone, and his body language is horrible. It's just not a good recipe for a young player moving forward. I normally don't give up on young players, and I'm not giving up on Julius Randle. Like I said, the only way I trade him is if we get a, a star in a package, maybe him and somebody else in a package for a star and a pick. I'm sorry, him, a pick, and a, another young player and a package for a star. Then I'd consider trading him or moving him, but honestly, I like Larry Nance Jr. better at a starting power forward position. He doesn't need the ball in his hands. Julius Randle takes our guards out of, uh, he takes them out of rhythm with all his over dribbling and I just don't don't like his sloppiness, and I think Laker, most of Laker Nation is fed up with that as well. I hope, though, I'm wrong and he improves and proves me wrong uh, because he still has next year before we have to decide whether we want to extend him or trade him. So Julius Randle's probably, for me, he got a B-. minus Because he did improve a little bit. I'm still not going to give him a C or a D, but he did improve a little bit, uh, especially in the scoring end. Uh, he did show flashes. The other night he had a nasty crossover behind his back and then a layup. So he gets a B minus. Julius Randle, promising player, but I don't know if that's a good combination of attitude mixed with uh, inconsistency. Nick Young, all right. Nick Young doesn't fool me. He he, he was in a contract year. He did the same thing with the year he played for Mike D'Antoni. I hope he he opts out of his contract and we never have to see him wear purple and gold again. The kid's a clown. Reminds me a lot of Dwight Howard. Don't like him. He's happy whether we win or lose. Not Laker material. Setting a bad example for JC. I know JC's passing game uh, decreased when he started hanging out with Nick Young. They got real cocky and stuff. I didn't like it. Um, Nick Young, for me, gets a D plus only because he improved on defense and he was a little bit more consistent. But he's still a streaky guy. Might as well go out and get somebody like J.R. Smith if you, <laughs> you want Nick Young. You know, um, Honestly, he gets a D plus from me. Moving on. Jordan Clarkson. Love the kid. All right. He's a horse. He works hard. Uh, he showed a lot of promise earlier in the season as a defensive player. Unfortunately, it didn't come to fruition towards the end of the season. He gets a B-plus from me. Love the kid. Um, definitely see potential in him, but I see more of a six-man-of-the-year candidate potential in him than I do as a starting 
point guard or shooting guard for the Lakers. Uh, now, my two favorite players of the season, actually one of my three favorite players of the season, is D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell improved whether the haters want to admit it or not. All right? The kid went from averaging, what, 13, 13 point something points a game to almost 16, basically 16 points a game. He went from averaging uh, 14 points before the All-Star break to t over 20 once we traded Lou Williams. So, uh, and when we moved into shooting guard, he looked even better. I mean, he lit up the Cleveland Cavaliers for four, his career high 42 points. If you guys think Brandon Ingram is showing flashes, so did D'Angelo. Just stop hating on the kid and give him time. Uh, I hope we don't trade him. I am acceptable to trading him only for a superstar like Paul George. But I'd much rather keep him and sign a superstar in the offseason. I'm sure Magic can work his magic and get rid of other players instead. D'Angelo Russell, for me, gets an A. Straight up, regardless of whatever the haters say. Or, I mean, the kid is only 22 years old, and he's already averaging uh, 16 points a game, 5 assists, 5 rebounds. That's pretty good for me. All right. Uh, moving on, Brandon Ingram. <coughs> Brandon Ingram, A+. Plus. Why? Because there was a huge growth from the beginning to where he's at now. In the beginning, I've said this in many videos, he looked really, really raw, and he looked like he wasn't ready for the NBA yet. He looked like he should have stayed another year in college. Some people were even going as far as calling him in a bust. Then again, that's why some people are not NBA analysts. You know, they're just fans who, they get emotional, so it's understandable. But Brandon Ingram truly has the keys to this franchise, and he is going to be our go-to moving forward. I think Russell will be his... Is Robin to his Batman if we don't sign a star in a couple years. Russell and Ingram could be Batman and Robin, and uh, I'd be happy with that. You know, that'd be a nice shooting guard, small forward combination. Uh, I only hope that we add a point guard like Lonzo Ball to run the show, because then it'll make it easier for guys like Russell and Ingram to get to the spots and finish. Uh, but definitely excited for the future, guys. Uh, you know, those are my grades. I saw Bleacher Report was grading the Lakers, and I didn't, I didn't agree with the grades. Uh, Brandon Ingram definitely deserved Rookie of the Year consideration, but the only reason that, that he's out of that is because he started off the season really slow, and I don't feel like Luke Walton gave him a fair shake. Uh, he should have started him since the start of the season because Dang played a horrible uh, preseason anyways. So, anyways, oh, and by the way, I don't know if I graded Luke or not, but Luke, Luke Walton gets a B-plus from me. He would have got a higher grade, but like I said, he didn't. I feel like he didn't give the young players a fair shake early on. Brandon Ingram, to me, was out playing little thing even early on, even though he was raw. So he should have started a long time ago. So that's why he gets a B-plus from me. We should have started developing young players from the beginning of the season instead of handing the team over to Lou Williams. So Luke Walton, good job. Not a great job. Get a B-plus from me. Um, anyways, those are my thoughts, guys. I'm definitely going to keep it locked right here for everything Lakers. I'll be dropping hella videos this summer. Um, uh, Shout-out to you guys for staying faithful and uh, and and. You know, holding on with me in this long se Laker season. I know it's been a roller coaster ride, but only real fans stick around. The fake ones turn to Clipper fans. So it is what it is, guys. I love you guys. Definitely uh, keep it locked. I'll be dropping videos real soon, probably in the next couple of days, for off-season plans, free agency, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> subscribe to my second channel, Danny's Mixes, for everything playoffs. I'm covering the playoffs. I love basketball, so even though I'm a diehard Laker fan, I'm going to continue covering the playoffs in basketball. I'll catch you guys later. Uh, leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe, and definitely um, keep a lock right here for everything uh, basketball. Peace out, guys.